Sick. Sick. <laughs> to be honest, the reason I got into it, the ladies, man. The ladies, that's where it's at. When I think about Mitch. That is Mitch. My name is Mitch Curtis. I like to consider myself a, not a pinball wizard. Pinball wizard is two 70s. I go with pinball, pinball sorcerer, sorcerer, and people tell me it's lame, but I refuse to listen. I'm going with pinball, pinball sorcerer. sorcerer. Call me a gig. I never really knew that it was somebody's hobby being a pinball, a pinball, a pinball sorcerer. sorcerer. <laughs> he once told me that he sweats when he plays. That's the reason he wears the sweatband. I'm part of the, it's like an online group, which <laughs> sounds super cool. Uh, the Boston Pinball Association, it's pretty much everyone in like Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine. Um, just, you know, so people communicate. A lot of people will like trade or sell games, uh, ask questions about fixing games. And also people, they're all collectors for the most part. Uh, you can ask where games are in location. Like, oh, I found this bar that has a Sopranos game. It was in good condition. You should go there. But, um, so, but also these people will have, I mean, I have three. These guys will have 20, 30 plus games in their game rooms, garages, wherever they can put them. And they keep them, the ones I've been to, they keep them in like pristine shape, like just out of the box. So it's, it's a lot of fun to go there. So this one cat, JR, he, he's up in Portland. It's far from here. I've been there twice. He has, he claims to have 90 games and they're, he probably has about 30 to 40 set up, but he has 90 in his place, like buried. You guys will see it, hopefully, and it's it's pretty crazy. So he um, he invites people over from time to time. Sometimes it's just getting together and playing. Other times he'll organize tournaments, and he does a really good job at it. This tournament coming up, I usually get smoked. I don't play that well. I'm more of, you know, I'll go have a couple beers and play by myself and just you know post a high score and be happy with it. But these guys are legit. They'll play for real. So you'll see it. You know, I could describe it, but you'll see it and. You can make your own assumptions about how wild these cars are. Uh, this game is Dolly Parton, uh, one of my newer games. I'm not crazy about the theme, but the game itself, Bally, they don't make a bad game. Don't know too much about Dolly. I know she's got some, some nice assets. <laughs> All right, but um, yeah, this is a wonderful game. It's probably from 1978, 79. But yeah, games from this era didn't have ramps. I find them to be more challenging. This one doesn't have any like voice sounds the way the one downstairs did. Do you want to play it? I'll play I'll do one. I'll do one quick. Oh, man. Once you get an extra ball, you can just open it up. That's key. That's key. You want to get to that comfort zone of taking risks, knowing you have the extra ball. That's my strategy. But even getting the extra ball. Oh, got it. That's a nice save. Shaking the machine, that's a whole other element. This is the Gottlieb Vulcan. Gottlieb used to run run pinball back in the day. They were one of the biggest companies. Now defunct. Too bad. Um, my brother got this game for me because he's a wonderful person. I think it's my favorite. It's the oldest. The simplest. All it is is drop targets and bumpers. But I love it. The flippers, they're really thick as opposed to the other game. It just makes it so much more challenging. And I could play this one for hours. Love it. Love this game. I really like Flash Jordan a lot. That game is hard. <laughs> that game is probably the hardest single ball bally of any any uh, any bally of that era. This game is just brutal. It's a split level play field. Um, it's got inline drops on the right. It's got some drops on the left. It has three flippers and. Um, Brutal out lanes. The out lanes, and it, this is the in lane, that's the out lane, and you can see it's just a metal post there, so you get really bad bounces. Actually, I bought the first one in 1988. I bought a Playboy, a Bally Playboy, one of my favorite games. I still have a copy down in the basement. The one that I had burned up in a fire, so I, uh, you know, I got a new one here. I had read Elton John and Rolling Stone talking about collecting and buying a particular machine, Fireball, back in the 70s. Anyway, I got the idea that you could own your own game because Elton was talking about buying a Fireball in, in some auction somewhere. And I thought, wow, I never thought you could own one, but uh, I guess you can. So anyway, when I, uh, probably 10 years later roughly, uh, I had a house and a job and whatever, you know, things you need to get a pinball. And uh, I decided to go find some of the old machines that I liked that you couldn't find as much anymore. They are basically becoming scarce. 
Uh, you couldn't find them on location. So I went out and bought a Playboy in 1988 and uh, when my house burned in 2000. And when the house burned, uh, of course I knew I was going to build a new house. I decided to build this place with more room for pinball. And after I had the room, I uh, started collecting more machines. And by the time we moved in the new house, I had about 30 of them. And I decided I would buy the rest of the machines that I wanted. Starts with one pinball machine. Don't buy one pinball machine unless you can fit 15 in your house. At least three. At least three. At least three. That's the rule. Yeah. My games, is, I'm, I'm a polygamist. Like, within my home, I have three wives. Lady Vulcan, Lady Dolly, and Lady Phantom downstairs. Those are my wives. They love me, I love them. But sometimes if I go out to the bar and I see a young lady named, let's call her Medieval Madness, yeah, I might put my fingers on her. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna go out and I'm gonna, I'm gonna flirt a little bit with Medieval Madness. I'm gonna, uh... Shh, Vulcan, don't start that, baby. You know you're my one. Dolly, tuck your shirt in, come on. And it's just, um... Yeah, I like I like to see what else is out there, but I like having these here. I'm I'm selfish in that way. I like having my ladies here, but I like meeting new ladies. Don't tell Don't tell Melissa. She'll get very upset. She's my number one pinball machine. Hey. <laughs> and um, I called Flat Tops, and I was like, Hey, is Mitch there? Person who answered the phone knew exactly. She was like, Yeah, the guy that plays pinball all the time. <laughs> I was like, yep, that's my man. And then, yeah, and he was actually amazed to find out that I knew how to find him because he didn't have a cell phone on him and that the people there knew who he was. He was amazed really and excited. terrified <laughs> all at the same time. I guess tonight, you're in, you're in my wheelhouse right now. This is Flat Top Johnny's. It's a bar so close to my house. And uh, within Boston, within any state you're watching this in, there are no pinball machines anywhere. It's done. Pinball machine's done. And uh, this place has two, and two great ones. This game right here, Medieval Madness, is the, the holy grail. It's like, the games we saw the other night, the games I have, are low end. This is the, oh, I'll pay $7,000 for Medieval Madness. Yeah, it's fun, but this is the, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, people love this game. So, my local bar has the best pinball machine within the pinball world, so I'm lucky. And I kick its ass. I kick this machine's ass. They don't make it easy for you. You just have to keep hitting shots without losing the ball. It's impossible. Total garbage. They make you work too hard to get a free game. They make you work too hard to achieve a certain level. And depending on who owns the machine or who splits rent or dividends on the machine, they set, they set the bar too high to obtain the, uh, the free game or the extra ball because the almighty dollar, you're going to sink more and more and more and more money into that machine. They should make pinball games easier. That way everyone would play them. I'm the only jerk, silly enough, to keep pumping quarters into it to beat it. And if I beat it, who cares? I do. I'm the only person that cares. The Attack from Mars is another pretty famous one, which, as you'll see, my high score, I'm the... Don't let me come off as like bragging, but look. Well, I am gonna brag, I'm gonna brag a little bit. I own this game, I own this game. Look at it, MTC, that's me, that is a proud situation. It's important to me to walk in and see my high score, my high score on, hold on, I'll set it up. That's me, That that's important to me. Nobody else, nobody else knows who MTC is. But I know who MTC is. So when I walk in to see MTC, point of pride right there. It's a point of pride. So I got, on this one, Rich just beat me with 142 mil. But, wait for it. Oh, he beat me twice, son of a bitch. RPM, yeah, it's my boy Rich. He's got, he's got kick ass initials, I love it, RPM. I've met him before and he's, I like meeting other people that are as passionate about it as me. Like, he goes there, he drinks his, I think he's like a whiskey drinker, I'm a beer drinker. If he has a high score, I look at that as like, all right, he had a good run, and it'll give me a challenge, like, I'll go beat it. Let's say your initials were tattooed on Carmen Electra's ass, and then some guy came in, made sweet, sweet, passionate love to Carmen Electra, crossed off your name on her butt, and put his initials. You'd wanna, you'd wanna go back, 
cross that guy's name off and put your initials on it. Like the other day, we went there for lunch and I beat his score. Next time he goes in there, he's going to see it be like, that motherfucker, you beat my score. So that's a challenge to him. It's like a back and forth. It's like a game of tennis. I mean, that's why you don't find them on location anymore because they're expensive, they're enormous, and they break somewhat frequently. We don't have the right tools to serve us. Today, everything's in, you know, standard or metro. Back then, it was just standard inches. And not all this high-tech technology and chips and whatnot. Everything was routed to relays. The relays broke. The ball hit and the relay broke. I mean, it's not because of a malfunction of a chip in the settlements. All the bulbs, those games had over 500, some over a thousand little mini bulbs. If one bulb went out, it would ruin a whole circuit. You'd have to be and plus, you know, I don't think younger kids care that much about it. Pinball has, not that I can remember, has ever gotten in the way of our relationship. Because when we go out or do things, like, we'll make pinball a part of what we're doing, but it doesn't end up being everything. Like, we talk, we hang out, we have a good time, we have a few drinks. And, yeah, I, I really don't think it has... And so far, all of the pinball tournaments he's been to on the weekends, I haven't had a problem with. I wonder if that will ever change, but it's been fun. This is a, something I've been doing for about 15 years, which is holding uh, pinball tournaments at my place. And uh, we've got a lot of pinballs, as you can see. We got 106 of them, and there's about 50 odd set up here in the house that people can play. And uh, we're running a little tournament tonight. Uh, <clears throat> this is sort of a BPA function. What we're doing is we're having pinball and golf tonight. We're playing uh, sort of like a golf scramble. We're going to have teams of four people, and they're going to be the teams are going to be balanced for skills. So there'll be people of all different skills on each team. Sweet, sweet. John sometimes will do the um, you know some of the eight players. As all captains, or sometimes oh, no he picks some no kind of random. Um, usually chooses people that that know a lot of the other so. players. The whole idea with golf is it's fun for people no matter what their skills are. You'll have very good players here. You'll have beginners. It won't matter. They'll all be on a team. They'll all have a fair chance of being on a winning team, no matter how they shoot individually. It's just like a pro-am golf scramble. Um, I picked Matt Gay. I played with him at um, Papa. He came in seventh in the C division of like 300 people, which I think is phenomenal. Um, so I definitely picked him. Uh, then I picked Mitch because I think he's a great player as well. And um, from what I've seen earlier tonight, um, I thought he was he was seven up worthy. And <laughs> and Linda McGill um, is our. What, the, Player, A minus player. Um, <laughs> and um, her and, and JR are the ones hosting the um, tournament, which is nice. And we're going to set a par for nine different pinballs. And then the way people are going to play is they're going to try to see how quickly they can get to that par. So whatever ball they're on when they get to that score will be their golf score, pinball golf score. So if you do it in one ball, you've got a hole in one, just like you were playing golf. Takes you two balls, you're gonna get a birdie. Takes you three balls, you'll have a par. And if you don't do that, you'll get a you'll get a bogey, which is four balls. And we have a score sheet. I don't know if your camera will pick it up or not, but it's basically a pinball golf score sheet. I'm in the process of making it out, and I've got uh, a few machines on there with some scores on it. It's done. Whew, just in time. Come on now. There we go. I don't want to be knocking people over, but all right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, man. You kidding me? Right, right down. Right down. 100,000. We get 10 balls, right? Four. Just one bogey. Talk to me. Up. Mentally. We're back on. And as a team, we're doing okay. We got this. You bitch. For real? Yeah. 
One and done, kid. One and done. That's all good. It's all good. I did too. If I got 124, we would have been different. <laughs> well done after nine. Um, I guess 20. I don't know what the what a good score is, but that's nice. pretty good. I feel good about 20. And uh, we'll see how the team is. Interesting setup here. We have uh, two teams that are tied, so we really have two second places. Okay. And this is. Seven up and a really long name is that a pussy on your machine or are you just happy to see me? That's the name <laughs> of the game. Hey, yeah! Fuck it, eh? All right, dudes, do this. Fabulous. Okay, so seven up is Mitch. Mitch, listen, Mitch shot a 20, okay? Matt shot a 24, two excellent scores here. Linda shot. A 23 as well, so that's excellent. Nice. This is Michelle's team, and they she drafted well, obviously, huh? And uh, <laughs> all right, absolutely. Listen to this. So 20, 23, 24, some nice scores there. Nice. Team averaged out to a 97. So now you know that's kicking butt, right? That's quite a bit below par. For um, the 97s, which is the is that a pussy on your machine? And yeah. seven up. <laughs> Step right up. Let's do it this way. Step, seven up. Step right up. Okay. Seven up, seven up. This seven is up. Mitch, Matt, Mitch. Mitch, Matt, Michelle, and Linda. Mitch, Matt, Michelle, and Linda. Accepting on behalf. See you, Matt. <laughs> so you know, Mr. Matt. All right. Okay. That was Mitch. Okay. Oh, you get it all. No, uh, Michelle. There she is. Yay. Congratulations. Good job. All right. Sure. Okay, now. Hey, I lost the 10. <laughs> Mitch. So. It only cost me 30 bucks to go play I know he's around here somewhere. There he is. All right. Third place. Oh, shit. I'll take it. Individual standing third place, 20 bucks. All right. Thanks, man. And that's pretty damn good. He shot a 20. Remember, Pyre is 27, and Birdie is 18. When I think about Mitch, I just get so happy. And really, like, he makes me so happy. He's funny he's kind um pretty much i want to say pinball that's what i'm that's what i'm here for that's what i'm supposed to do when i'm long gone people are like yeah i remember mitch that motherfucker saved pinball salute <laughs>